we had a message in our heart and we, we didn't quite have language or words to it just yet. So we used a phrase that I had never heard before. Um, and then last night at, in the, with the youth, hallelujah, yes. it was spectacular. Hallelujah. Um, the language came. And then last night around 2 a.m., I guess God doesn't matter if we sleep since he's awake all the time. <laughs> um, more more language came to what I felt like the Lord was saying. And, and so Pastor Daryl um, already kind of spoke it out. And so what, what the Lord kind of spoke to us over through the night is, we, he sent us here to make an announcement of the new season. Um, to, to give words and, 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 and understanding to what God desires to do in this house and in this season. Um, and it actually started last Sunday at our church during a prayer. We pray um, at our church five days a week. Um, we, we pray a lot at our church. And during our prayer time, I heard the Lord say this to me, and I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. You really need to have this. And it's a word I don't normally say. He said, it's lingering season. It's lingering season. And I, I kind of knew what that meant. And so this morning, I'm going to give a, just kind of a few examples as the Lord kind of takes us down this path. But whenever there's lingering season, it always turns into saturation time. Whenever there's lingering season, it always transforms or turns into a time of just saturation with the Lord. And so I know that the word of the Lord has been spoken. I know that God has been doing things here. Um, but I feel like as, as we step into the season, he's saying, if you just linger with me. And so what, what that looks like is extra time. Somebody say extra time. So like in baseball, if there's nine innings, there's going to be some 10 or 11 innings. There's just going to be some time where we, we, we separate a little bit and say, God, I want to stay with you a little longer today. I want to stay with you, whatever your normal prayer. I just want to separate myself just a little bit. Um, we can call it consecration. Um, we can call it um, times of prayer. But I just felt like the Lord said that phrase, linger. And, and so I didn't really know what it meant. I'm not going to give you a dictionary definition but then he began to show some things to me, um, and I kind of talked about it with the youth. So when we first got saved, how many people were heathens before they first got saved? That should be everybody's hand in this place. However, some of us were like major heathens. Yeah, amen. I know, yes. And so my wife and I were, were when I say that, we were unchurched. Um, there was no religiosity. There was no... Um, we, we didn't, we were unhinged a bit. Like we didn't know what the proper protocol was. So we would stay, we would, we would like, we'd go to church and we'd stay there. You know, y'all go to church and when church is over, you leave. And we didn't want to leave. So our worship team would, would kind of linger and they just play songs and sometimes they were joking around and sometimes they were just doing new beats and every now and again they would just go into a flow and my wife and I, maybe like five other people would just be lingering. And this went on for months. Now we, just, we didn't know you're supposed to, when they dismiss and turn the lights off, <laughs> you're supposed to leave. <laughs> Don't miss me here. Where are, we supposed, where, where, where are we in a hurry to go to? And so the, the, I know many of you are like, well, we have to cook and we have to, right? But we didn't know any better. We just got saved. And there was a hunger there. There was a, there was a, a like, I'm thirsty, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm at church and praise and worship is awesome and, and, and God's moving. Why would I want to leave this place? Right? To eat? You eat. And so we just would linger. And um, as the Lord was showing this to me, he was like, you remember that the more you linger, it was like about six months of this. And again, nobody in the church would say, hey, you know, we're vacuuming. They would just let us sit at the altar. And I had, a, my daughter was maybe five or six at the time. I'm not exactly sure how old she was, but she was, she was young enough to not understand protocol. She was young enough to not understand, you know, you shouldn't go by the keyboard and I would, I would, I eventually begin to correct those type of things, but there was a moment in this lingering time that we were doing that all of a sudden my daughter caught, I don't want to say it that way, the Holy Spirit fell on us in a session of just 
practicing, where we wind up staying in the presence of God on a Sunday afternoon after church for three or four hours after service, where worship was just nonstop and the Holy Ghost was just moving. And how it started was my five or six year old daughter was at the altar. I thought she was just kind of playing around. And all of a sudden she began to cry out, God, I want more. And so there's something that happens in this season. The Bible says in, in Ecclesiastes chapter three, I know you're familiar with this, but there's a time and there's a season for everything, right? And so there's a time where I need to go do a lot of hard work, but I feel like there's a time where the Lord says, just separate just a little from me. So today I'm going to give you a few keys and a few examples to help us understand what I believe the Lord is saying to not just me, but this church. Somebody say lingering time. There was, a, there was another example that the Lord gave me about this. Um, when there was a time where my, my, my wife and I went to, the, went to, went to Costa Rica. I, actually, you know what? Let me correct myself. She was not with me on this trip in Costa Rica. I was there by myself. And to, to explain this, we were teaching at a Bible school. Are you guys okay? Okay, it's okay if I come down here? Oh, yeah. Am I going to mess up the... Is Trish okay? All right. Um, so... There was a time I was in, I was in Costa Rica and my, my wife and I were teaching, sorry, I keep saying that, I'm used to being with her. We were teaching at a Bible school um, and we were teaching almost like eight hours a day. And then we're, at night we'd go to a church. And so that's a, lot of, that's a lot of work, that's a lot of sharing. We were doing this for about three weeks straight, teaching for about eight hours a day and then um, coming home and then going straight to a church and ministering. And so I was in my last week of that. I was really, 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 really tired. I was, I, was, I was tired of preaching. My social battery was down. You ever been there? Like, I was just, I was going through some things, right? And I, and I was at the point where I just, I didn't want to, to I didn't want to do what, I, what, I, what, what, we're, what we're doing. And we went to a church. And we went to this church. When we showed up at the church, it was a Friday afternoon, about four o'clock. And everyone in the church was already praying. And I remember saying this to myself, oh, God, no. We're going to be here all day now. I'm ready to go home. I'm just being real with you. But the church was already on their face praying. And you have, I want you to see the picture. There was no roof on the church. So if it could have rained, they would have got soaking wet. There was no concrete. There was dirt. And they were on the ground. They were just pressing into God in a way that I had never really seen or experienced. Yet my flesh wanted to take a nap. You ever been there where you want to, you desire. And so I pressed in, I, we wind up teaching, we wind up ministering. And then the next day we, they, they were like, you know, we know you guys are Americans. We know you guys want to go eat, but we're going to be, so they prayed all night. Somebody say all night. all night. Then they came to the session in the morning and then they continued to pray off afternoon. And they said, hey, I know you guys want to go eat, but we're not going to go eat. We're going to linger. We're going to stay here. And what they didn't know, what I didn't know is the more you linger, the more he comes. The more you worship him, the more you spend time, the more you set your heart and your attention on him, the more he shows up and speaks and delivers. And, and, and I think as the lady was prophesying, I was, I was hearing this in my spirit as well, deliverance, sometimes we don't even know that we need God to set us free from something. But the more I'm in his presence, the more he presses in and drives out anything that the enemy has tried to set a trap for you in your life. So if you are struggling with PTSD, today is your day to be delivered from trauma. And it, when you're in his presence, come on, it's terrific. It's not trauma. Yeah. So here we are, you know, we're worshiping. And so I decided, my rest of my team, they decided to leave. But I felt like the Lord in Costa Rica said, I want you to just stay with this people for a little while. Don't go eat, just, just stay. And they were singing a song in Spanish. Um, I, we, it's like, I love you, Lord. You guys know that one? Y'all can go ahead, keep going. We rejoice. Okay, so before, because some of y'all are off key. And, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So there, it was about 11, about 11 a.m. they started singing this song. And they just kept singing the same song to about five o'clock in the afternoon. Now it was in Spanish, 
So it sounded a lot better than ours, but they just kept singing. And so I'm sitting there and we're just, I'm just singing with them and worshiping with them and they're weeping and they're crying and they're just, and I'm like, Lord, what is this revival? Like what's happening right now? They won't stop. I'm tired. Now I'm hungry. I'm just the carnality of us sometimes, right? But these people had reached the place where all they desired was him. They had jobs. They had places to go. But they had set some time apart to just minister to the Lord. Around 7 o'clock that night, my team came and we got up to, to minister. And at this part, I can't really explain. I, I have it on video and I've watched it over and over for years. All I can say is in the middle of me preaching, in the middle of it, like in the middle of me saying, hey, guys, I'm about to say it was like something hit the place. And the fire of the Holy Ghost came on every single person in the room. Because we lingered. Because we set time apart. Because we gave God our full attention. And I was able, so God was shaking. He says, this is what happens when my people will understand the season. See, there's even, Jesus rebuked people in the Bible. The Pharisees, because they didn't recognize the times and the seasons. Um, the sons of Issachar were able to recognize the times and the seasons. And so th there's a season for everything. And I know we have jobs, and I know we have work, and I know we got stuff to do, and I know we got tasks that we have to do, but I I'm not sure what it's going to look like. But we did it a little bit last night with the youth. There were some games we needed to get to. There was some pizza downstairs. Can I get an amen? amen. There, was some, there was some, how can I say this? There were some cultural things that we're used to doing that aren't necessarily kingdom culture. And because we took some time to just linger with him, the spirit of God came in a way, like he came this morning in a way, and I believe what he's saying to us is, I want to come, but you got to separate yourself so I can come. I want to come, I want, I, want to, I want to change a generation, I want to touch a church, I want to touch a city, I want to touch a people, but, but, I, but I just need you to understand in this season, just come away with me. I, I, I joke a lot when I minister, I'm a Lakers fan, can I get some, some sort of acknowledgement? Amen. Thank you. He's just, this is just some examples, we're going to look at some scripture in a minute, but these are just some samples to help us understand what, what I believe the Lord is saying about the lingering part. So I, I, I was a missionary to Africa for, for, for several years. And one of the things that always bothered me is how God would send me to the mission field in a certain season. This would be good. It was always during the NBA playoffs. <laughs> and it just so happened the Lakers had gone to three back-to-back -back championships. Like when I, I don't want to tell you how much of a Lakers fan I am because you're going to be like, is he even saved? But like... <laughs> Like a serious Lakers fan. Like, I stay up sometimes to 1 o'clock in the morning watching them play. And I missed all three NBA Finals. Because every single time the game would come on, the Lord would say, come away with me. And that's what lingering season looks like. Sometimes it's just like, hey, can you turn the TV off for like just an extra 10 minutes? And can you and your family stop talking about what's going on in society and talk about me? Can we, just, can we just separate from the, the thoughts and the ideals and the values of culture and just focus on seeking first the kingdom of God? Just take an extra 10 minutes. It may be 10 minutes for you. It may be 20 minutes for you. But then when we gather together, then we have to allow God. And I, this church already does that. Allow God to come and have his way. But then sometimes it's like, hey, on Tuesday, we're going to allow God to come and have his way. I know you got baseball. Wait, is it baseball season yet? Or is it hockey? Yeah, I know there's stuff, but can you miss the stuff? Because I want to do something in your life. And one of the things that, that I think sometimes when we miss these seasons, because I've missed the season before, but the thank God seasons come, like there's, there's, there's uh, what is that, what is that? We don't have it, what's it called, winter? We don't have it. Winter, spring, so it's like, well, you know that if you're up here, I think you guys have all four seasons, correct? So you know that the new season is coming. You know spring is coming. So I want to say this to you here before I go any further. You may have missed 
a lingering season in the past. But it's going to come again. And I, but I feel like it's, it's right here, right now. There was another time I was, in, I was in the nation of Ghana. Are you guys okay? Can you just wave at me for a second? I was, thank you. I was in the nation of Ghana for seven weeks. Same situation, physically tired, um, God moving in tremendous ways, teaching a lot. And we, we were invited to a service to go minister. And when we got to the service, the church had been praying. Somebody say pray. And if you've ever been to Africa, they don't pray like Americans. There's a lot of fire coming out. And they're praying and they're praying. We walk into the sanctuary and everybody in the church is on their knees. There's no leader of the service. Everyone's just on their knees, just, just laying out. And our team and I wind up ministering. The glory of God came. It was a great way. But we left early because we were tired, because we had to do other things. We just, we didn't, we didn't tap in like we should have. And when we got in the taxi cab, the Holy Spirit said to me, could you not tarry with me for one hour? And so that was a moment that the Lord reminded me, he said, you missed me there. And a lot of times we miss the Lord. We miss because we won't stay at just, just a, just a little longer. So look at your neighbor and say, just a little longer. I want to give you a couple keys today. What happens during this season of lingering? It turns into saturation. But the first thing it does is separates us from culture. The first thing it will do, it, it will begin to separate culture from us. Um, I defined culture a little while ago, but I want to say it again. I define culture this way. It is the collective thinking of a people. The ideals, the beliefs, and values of the people. One more time. What is culture? It is the collective thinking. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so we, we shared it with the youth a little bit, but, but now we're talking to grown folks up in here. Sometimes we can get connected to things that are connected to God. I'm, I, I must be preaching to the choir in here just now. Sometimes we can allow the, the, the values of the earth and the values of the world and the values of our, of, our, of our parents that weren't kingdom and the values of our coworkers and the values and the ideals and we can, get, we can get upset and angry. And I wanna say this, when you linger with God, when you spend more time with God, the things that upset you that's going on in the cosmos of this world will begin to drift away from you. In 1 John, let's put, let's put that at 1 John chapter five, 1 John chapter five, Verse four through five, this is some of the things that happen when we choose and make a decision to linger. First John chapter five, verse four, you, I think you guys know this. It says, whatsoever is born of God, whatsoever, I was making sure it was up there, whatsoever is born of God. Look at your neighbor and ask them, are they a whatsoever? Look at your other and say, hey, are you a whatsoever? So, so here, here's the thing, we, one, of, one of our things we talk about is the born again reality, right? And if I'm born again, if I'm born from above, if I'm refathered, if I'm regened, if, if I am born again, right, that means my perspective, my reality should be transformed. Amen. And so sometimes we can be born again, but still connected to the culture that's not the kingdom. Does that make sense to you? So here's what the scripture says, whatsoever is born of God, overcomes the cosmos, overcomes the world. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, this is tough, but we're going to say it and we're going to smile. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says it like this, that Satan, I said it like that to make it sound real evil. <laughs> Satan is the God of this world. Same exact word here, cosmos. Jesus told us to go into all the world, same exact word, cosmos, and preach. He says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. When I'm, when I'm saying culture, I'm talking about the cosmos, anything that's ordered, or that's, uh, that's fashion, that's education, that's media. Somebody say media. media. 
So we can get connected to things that God is saying, if you would come away with me for a time and a season, I will drive all of that out of you. Your joy will return. Your happiness will return. The power of God will return. The move of the Holy Ghost will return. But sometimes we can be so connected to the cosmos that we miss the connection that God is trying to do in our hearts. Somebody say, I want to linger with the Lord. And whenever we linger, whenever we spend extra time, we become saturated with his presence. What is culture? One more time, it is the collective thinking of a people. The ideals, the beliefs, and the values. We don't want, how do I say this? We don't want what the world has to offer. The world should want what we have to offer. The first thing that happens when we spend extra time, we get separated from what's happening in the culture. Hallelujah. Imagine being at church seven days a week. This is just, I'm not, this is not say, Pastor, you can sit seven, no, no, no. Imagine you being at church seven days a week and people at work come to you and say, did you hear this? And you're like, I've been in the glory. I have no idea what you're talking about. There's some things I wanna say. I heard of a nation I feel like I could say it here. There's a nation that when there was a lot, there was a, I'm, I'm trying to say it in a certain way, okay, so just bear with me. But there was a nation where there was a lot of things going on that a lot of the diseases that were happening in the earth weren't happening in that nation. And when they asked them why, they said, because we don't have the news. I'm going to say this over here. There was a nation in Africa that was very, very poor. And when people came there to find out why they weren't diseased, because they weren't hearing what we were hearing. We can separate from culture. And when I come away with him, he drives that spirit away from us. Number two, if I, if I set this time to come away with him and linger with him, not only will I be saturated, but he'll readjust my focus. He'll readjust my focus. How many people need their focus adjusted? I, 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 like, I like to say it like this. You used to be able to read, right? Now all of a sudden you need like four eyes to see. He'll fix our eyesight. Don't miss this. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking spiritually. He'll, fix, he'll change what we see. When I, when, I, when I separate myself unto him. And so I, I said it like this in the men's breakfast. All focus is, if I want to define focus, when I'm saying he'll adjust our focus, all focus is, is you and I deciding who or what will be the master of my life. All focus is, is us deciding. Who decides? One more time. Who decides? Let, let me, okay, because y'all not saying it loud enough for me. So who do, who's the master of your life? So who decides that? We do. One more time. Who decides that? We do. Say, I decide, I decide. Who, masters who masters my life. Come on. All focus is, is us deciding who's the master. There was, a, there was a TV show. I don't know where God gives me this stuff from. But I don't know if you ever saw it. But in my neighborhood, we used to watch a TV show with a guy named Bruce Leroy in it. You guys ever seen that? It was called The Last Dragon. Anybody ever heard of Bruce Lee? Not Bruce Lee. Bruce Leroy. Bruce Lee. Somebody say Bruce Leroy. All right. So, so I want to help you understand focus. There was a guy in the movie. Um, his name was Shonuff. And Shonuff, whenever he showed up to fight, he would always wave his hands like this. And what he was doing was distracting the opponent. But when Bruce Leroy showed up, Bruce Leroy had a different set of skills. And so whenever he showed up, he would never be distracted. He'd always whoop, show enough. <laughs> right? And so what I'm saying to us is when we, when we decide who's our master, the big thing show enough would say, he would wave his hands to people. He would, oh, don't miss this. He would hypnotize them with his hands and he'd say, who's your master? Because he got them all focus. And then they would, every, every opponent would say, y'all never saw that movie? We gotta get y'all in a different neighborhood, come on. <laughs> he would show up with his jerry curl and he would say, who's your master? And he'd wave his hands and everybody would go, they get hypnotized and they say, show enough. But when Bruce, Lee, Bruce Leroy showed up, 
he would say, I'm the master. Because I decide who's the master of my life. When I separate my time with God, I'm saying, God, I'm focusing on you, and you are the master of my life. I, I, I'm deciding the moment I got born again, I will overcome the cosmos. I will overcome the world. He begins to separate us from culture. Number two, he will readjust my focus. Can you put up Psalm 22, verse 3 for me? Are you guys happy this morning? Yes. Before we read Psalm 22, there was, uh, my wife and I are pastors of a church now, and we started pastoring five years ago. It'll be five years in May. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, we didn't know any better, Pastor Darrell. We just thought, you know, we've been on the mission field. We're, we're, we believe in revival in our hearts, so we're just like, come on, let's go, people. We're going after revival. We're, we're 21 days of prayer and fasting. Let's go. And people were like, do what? <laughs> and so when the, when the Lord, just to give you some clarity, when the Lord spoke to me, I, we were exercising, and he said, hey, I want, you to, I want you to go to church. I want you to, in the sanctuary, I want you to have 21 days of prayer and fasting. And my first thought was like, you know, that's a long drive, Lord. Like, I live an hour and a half away from my church. So for 21 days, you want me to do what? And he said, and listen, he says, do I pay your bills or do you pay your bills? <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> but here's the thing. It was also Christmas time. So in Christmas times, you normally do programs. And, and so, again, new pastor. I don't like any of those things. Right? I'm not used to those things. And so we're going to have a Christmas program. He's like, yeah, you can still do that. But every day at church, I want prayer in the sanctuary, specifically. Not in your house, in the sanctuary. I want you and your whole church to spend 21 days fasting and prayer, seeking my face. What agenda, Lord? No agenda. Just seek me. But many people don't know what that looks like. Right? Because if it gets too quiet, we get edgy. Right? Well, we're just seeking God. So, so we're doing this, we're doing this, and there's no agenda. So then we get to the Christmas uh, whatever we called it, because I still don't like them. So what's it called? Event. We get to the Christmas event, and, we're, and I'm suffering for Jesus. Like, I'm wanting this to be over. We were singing jingle bells, and we're, we're singing very earthly songs. And, and then at the, end of the, at the end of the meeting, my wife just, we, we both just felt led. Everybody say, felt led. Felt led. To continue worshiping. Continue. We felt led to continue, to linger. And then all of a sudden, I say this because our church wasn't necessarily designed this way or wasn't necessarily used to this type of manifestation, but a lady came to our church for the, for the thing, for the, for the event. And we started worshiping God, and next thing you know, the Holy Ghost is manifested. She's screaming, jumping all over the floor. Like all this thing started, in the service just randomly started happening. Why? Because the more you linger, the more he saturates. And sometimes it may take six months. Sometimes it may take two months. Sometimes it may take two weeks. Sometimes it may take two days. But if you sit with him long enough, the room you sit in, the place you sit in will be saturated with his presence. Amen. And when people walk in, whoo, it's a whole nother level. Psalm 22, verse 3. And I'm almost done. I'm going to let y'all go this morning. Nobody said, keep preaching. God inhabits, I think that's what it says, the praises. Oh, this is a good one. Sorry, camera person. This is perfect. Here's what this scripture says to us. But you are holy enthroned in the praises of Israel. Another translation says that God inhabits, he takes up residence. Another translation says he sets up a throne room in the place where his people will worship him. Somebody shout, just shout, it's lingering season. It's lingering season. Whenever we worship God, and if we will linger with it and do it over and over again and stay with him for a season, like he'll let us get back to our everyday activities. They're not that important, trust me. 
right? But, but the more we do this, the, I, I have a vision of the angels coming and building his throne. Wait, hold on. He likes it like this. He wants it right here. And then one day you'll show up and God will be already sitting in the room. Like a, 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 a manifestation of his presence in a way that we've never, maybe never experienced before. That when you just walk in, you'll know. Like, I know he's in us, and I know he's here. He says when people get, when two or three gather, I'm there. Well, I'm talking about a, a level of manifestation where it's, where it's more presence than you've ever seen before. Because he says, the more you worship me, the more you praise me, the more you set your affection on things above, the more you give my attention, the more I want to be with you. The more I want to tell the angels of heaven that, shh, my people are worshiping me. He sets up, he's enthroned, his praises in his people. He'll begin to separate us from culture. He'll readjust our focus. The third thing is, it will produce spiritual hunger in us. Lingering season will produce a spiritual hunger in us. I, I left this out. I will make sure I say it to you again. Worship, I said it uh, to the men. Worship and praise attract God to our environment. Worship and praise attract God to our environment. I, li I like to say it like this at home, that our environment now becomes his. We had a lady, we had a, lady um, a missionary come, come visit our house. And in, in our home, this is how we do it in our home, because we're just crazy like this. We pretty much have worship on in almost every room, almost 24-7. I do watch the Lakers, so it does go off. But for most of the time during our day, worship is on. And there's times where we'll walk into the room and you'll find yourself just sitting down, just spending intimacy time with him. Because he's already in there. Like, he's in me, but he's in there. Does that make sense to you? Somebody say, I want to linger with God. It will produce spiritual hunger. Matthew chapter 5, you know that. Right, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But I want to look at Psalm 107. Are y'all getting this today? Yes. Psalm 107, verse 32 through 36. I'm going to read it off the board if you guys don't mind. Psalm 107, verse 32 to 36. Number one, if we will linger with God during this season, he will separate culture from us. He will readjust our focus. It will produce spiritual hunger in me. Do I have any hungry folks in the room? You know, there's a difference between me, and I've said this before, hungry and hungry. My mama used to ask me, are you hungry or hungry? Listen, because sometimes we say we're hungry, but we're picky. You ain't hungry. But when I'm hungry, anything will do. Right? And God is looking for some hungry folks. Because when I'm, when, when I'm really, really hungry, time doesn't matter. Uh, when I'm really hungry for the move of the Spirit, and I'm really hungry for the things of God, like what's happening around me doesn't matter. My focus shifts. My identity even changes in a moment. All I want is you. I'm going to go all the way to verse 36. Listen to what it says. Let them exalt him also in the assembly of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land into the barrenness from the wickedness of those who dwell in it. I want to pause right there. So he's, he's, he's talking about two things here. And what happens when you linger long enough, you will get hungry for the things of God more than you were on yesterday. And so he's talking about dry lands here. And then he says he's also going to turn the dry land into a fruitful land. Let's keep going. He turns the wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell. In the place where it's dry, there he puts the hungry. Amen. Oh my gosh. Amen. I mean, we got this scripture because we were, we were struggling in a time because culture was, was overwhelming us. 
You know, you don't, you, who, who feels me on that? Like, like the, 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 the atmosphere of the city was getting on my last nerves. What was happening around me was, was, was making me unfruitful. And the Lord showed us this scripture. He said, I placed you there. So hungry could be there. Hunger could be there. Amen. I come to the hungry. Amen. Amen. There he makes the hungry to dwell. That they may establish a city. <sighs> Imagine that God. Your father, my father, doesn't want to just dwell in the church. He wants to set up his throne in the city. Last thing, Exodus chapter 33. I believe this is lingering season for Triumphant Life Church. And the more we linger with him, the more he will saturate us. Lingering, in my experience, lingering season always turns into saturation time. And I wanted to give us some keys today. It will separate us from culture. It will readjust my focus. It will produce spiritual hunger. And the last thing this, this extra time with the Lord will produce is intimacy. Intimacy. And true intimacy uh, there's a, there's a, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think for the right words to make sure I say this. I, I can, I'm just going to say it. In order to be truly intimacy, both people have to be naked. I ain't get no amens on that one. <laughs> Even as the word of the Lord came out, sometimes we don't like to reveal the trauma we've gone through. See, Jesus was naked. And one of the biggest things that happened in the garden is we covered our nakedness. And so sin consciousness will make us cover and hide. But when I'm lingering with him, there's no more hiding. When I, when I linger with him, he will reveal to me the things I need to let go. The things that culture says is okay. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. The things that culture that has got into the church that now says okay, but doesn't come from the kingdom, it comes from the world. And the more I linger with him and spend time with him, he will say things like, you need to cut that relationship off. You can't go further with me being tied to them. I'm preaching better, y'all shouting right now. When Abraham went up the mountain, he said, me and the lad go yonder to worship. Oh, me and the lad go yonder to worship. Some people had to stay at the bottom. He came back, but only a few people can go when he was willing to make the sacrifice. When we're lingering, there's going to be some people who won't show up because they ain't got time for that. <sighs> some of the biggest meetings, hear me by the Holy Ghost right now. The biggest meeting in a church should be the prayer meeting. If more people came to the prayer meeting, the pastors would have to do less praying. Not that we don't want to pray for you. Don't miss this. But our job is not to pray for you. Our job is to teach you how. I tell my church this. Take this off the video, by the way. But I tell my church this. I, this is what I desire. I'll pray for you. I'll do, I'll do whatever, whatever what's, what's in the will of God for your life. But I don't want to pray for you. I want you to go kick the devil's butt. Then come back and tell me how you kick the devil's butt. And now we rejoice together. Come on. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, and we'll let you go. When Jesus is my Lord and Savior, we don't make excuses. That's right. We make history. And a lot of times we don't go to the next level with God because we make excuses. And God is looking for history makers. Listen, he said he wants to dwell in a city. I believe the name of this city is Endwell. And I always say, we're going to Endwell, New York, where all things end well. Is that the slogan? 
Is it really? Yeah, oh, look at me in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. We talked about this with the youth. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. This is powerful. Because do, do we have any people in the church that have friends? If you have a friend, raise your hand at me. Wave at me. <laughs> do you have some enemies? Raise your hand at me. Put y'all's hands down. Here's the thing. We talk to friends differently. Amen. So here's the word saying that God spoke to Moses like his friend. That's a level. But even in this relationship with God and Moses, Moses still had something where he focused on task and not the presence. Moses constantly went in and out of the tabernacle. But here it says that there was a young man, he says, and he would return to the camp. And y'all know the story that when Moses returned to the camp, oftentimes he wound up hitting a rock, he wound up breaking the Ten Commandments. Roses, Moses had some issues. Because you know how people be acting. Right? But listen what it says. But Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Moses was the one who said, as for me and my house. I mean, Joshua was the one who said, as for me and my house, we don't care what culture is going to do. Why? Because he was a lingerer. Joshua and Caleb were the ones that had a different report. Why? Because he was a lingerer. Like when you, when you, when you study that story in Numbers, they all, all 12 spies all saw the same thing. But two of them came back with a very different report. Why? Because they were, they were people who stood, stayed in the presence of God. And when you stay in God's presence, when you become intimate with him, he births his promises on the inside of you. This is making sense to you this morning. I want you to write this down and we're going we're gonna to stop here and say some things. The guy who loved God's presence, the people who love God's presence will be the people who occupy his promises. The people who love God's presence will be the people who occupy his promises. Four things. In lingering season, it will separate me from culture. It will adjust my focus. It will produce spiritual hunger in me and it will produce intimacy in me. Last thing I'll say here. I heard this the other day. This is not original. So you can say Ecom said it, but I'll take credit. Revival is when we are awakened to what is available, and then we pursue it. Revival is when we are awakened to what is available, and then we pursue it. Sometimes we can miss the season with God because we've got too much stuff to do. Has anyone ever been there? Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're overwhelmed. I feel like this weekend was God showing us what's available. That there's more available, there's more of my presence. But sometimes to get more, it takes more time. And there's a, there's a season where that grace is available. And I believe that season of that grace is here for us. Is this making sense to you? Amen. There'll be deliverances that take place just because you're in his presence. No one's going to have to lay hands. No one's going to have to pray. Listen, when you're in his presence, there's no human effort. When I'm, when I'm with him, it's really, really, really easy. But here's the thing, and I'm just a little extra here. Sometimes it's hard in the beginning because I'm not used to it. Come on. Y all, y all, I, th I feel like it's, sometimes it's hard to, to linger because there's an itch. to We got, a, we got stuff to do. Right now, for me, I was ignorant to the things of God and the things of church. Uh -huh. So we just we just we just did what what our spirit told us to do. Uh -huh. We ain't got no place to go. Who's doing the cooking? Yeah. We are. So ain't nothing gonna get cooked until we get there. Uh -huh. So we'll get there, 
when we get there. But as long as we're here, there doesn't matter. Don't miss that. Right? All the things that we have to do, most of them come from culture. Martha, Mary, there's one thing that's needed. I will not take that from her. And I feel like there's an invitation the Lord is saying, there's one thing that's needed. And I'm laying it here for you. As a, as a community, I'm laying it here with just one thing that's needed, time with me. And if you will accept that invitation today, I'll set you free from culture. I'll birth a new thing in your heart. I'll stir you like you've never been stirred before. I'll come and dwell in a city. I'll come and dwell in your home. I'm starting to dwell in your universities. I'm starting to do that. I'm starting to dwell with, with, with a generation because they're willing to say, I'm not going to class. I guess they figure they're not paying for it anyway, so I'm not going for class. Right? But this is what he's saying to us right now. Like there's a window right now where the Holy Ghost is saying, if you will step in and let me have the seat, I will fill your houses, I will fill your churches, I will fill your cities, I will fill your universities. But will you accept the invitation? Let's lift our hands. Pastor Rob, when you come up and share what you wanted to share real quick. Let's just lift our hands for a few seconds and wait on the Lord. What you shared last night. So I just wanted to share what saturation means. We looked it up yesterday, last night, and I was like, wow. So, Father, we thank you for your saturation of your presence. Saturation is the state or the process that occurs when no more of something can be absorbed, combined with, or added. When we linger and we allow the Holy Spirit to saturate us, that means he will sit there and I, we will absorb the Holy Spirit to where we are full of the Holy Spirit. That his presence, we won't be able to contain any more of his presence because we are saturated with his presence. It's not just we have a mark of him. We're saturated with him. And when we were singing the song and it was incense arise, I thought about, you know, sometimes you, you know, there's incense has this aroma. It has a smell. And have, we, have you guys ever hugged someone and it's like, oh, my God, why do I smell like that? And it's like their perfume has come upon you and now you smell that person and you're like why do I smell and you're like oh yeah I hug sister Betty at church it's like when we saturate ourselves we with the Holy Spirit he just he pours he like drenches us in his aroma and so no matter who we touch who we come in contact with they will leave away from you saying, what is that smell? What is that? Because you have caused them to encounter the Holy Spirit. May we linger with him. May his presence come upon us and saturate us so that no matter who touches us, that we ooze with his presence, his love, it just oozes out of us. May we have a tangible presence of the Holy Spirit, that people get healed in our presence, yes. that our shadow heals people because we've been lingering with the Father, that the love of God just, 
it just drips and it pours out of us. And that when people are around us, they will know that there is something different because we've been in the presence of the Lord. It is so important that we just linger with him. And when we do, he will change us. Everything that is not like him, he will purify us. Mm. He will cause it to go away because to be saturated means to be absorbed. We absorb everything of him. His characteristic, his likeness, his love, his healing power, it all, we just saturate it all so we can impart it to others, so we can spread the good news, we can spread the gospel, we can share his love because we are his ambassadors. The disciples turn things upside down. That is our, we should be turning things upside down. Wherever you live, in well, in Dakot, Vestal, Johnson City, Binghamton, you should be turning it upside down. And it starts with you and then your household and then your, your schools and your workplace and your city. Everywhere you go, you leave a presence. It's like you've been sitting out in a rainstorm and you go and sit. When somebody sits in that spot, they get wet. They're like, what is this? It's just the lingering, because you've been lingering so long, that smell, that scent, that perfume, that incense just lingers. Hallelujah. He's so good. And that's what he wants for us. He wants that for you because he loves you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.